magic is ripe with creativity and how we grow ideas. As a magician, I nurture the seeds of impossibility so that they flourish into the gateway to unimaginable amazement and wonder. Magic and creativity go hand in hand. And I found that for me, in order to be creative, I need to be willing to go the distance. I need to be willing not to quit. I need to keep thinking. I need to immerse myself completely because I've noticed that my creativity evolves over time. It's an ongoing process that I refine and update as I gain new life experiences, make new con con connections, and continue to grow creatively. And in all my years of studying magic, I keep hearing the same name over and over again, Di Vernon. He's considered to be the greatest magician of the last century and arguably of all time. He's also Canadian. Vernon was born in Ottawa in 1894. Um, he taught at the prestigious Magic Castle in Los Angeles, California. He was known as the professor out of reverence. Vernon was so influential that any modern card magic you see today, including that trick your uncle showed you when you were a kid, has roots in him. You can't say that about anybody else. And Vernon had this idea. Vernon once said that most magicians stop thinking too soon. He believed that magicians were shallow thinkers instead of deep thinkers. That magicians would settle with the first possible answer as the answer instead of an answer as one of many. But what if this doesn't apply just to magicians? What if we all can stop thinking too soon? I think we do. I know that I'm guilty of this. Um, on numerous occasions, especially when I was a student, you know, you have to do one assignment just to get the next and the next and the next so you don't drown. I'm sure you know the feeling. But university taught me how to take large quantities of information, sift through them to parse out the most basic level of understanding. And I feel like I cheated myself. I feel like I cheated myself on what I could have learned if I'd taken another look. Because there is always something else to learn if you just keep thinking. But ladies and gentlemen, we have only just dipped our toes. We are about to dive headfirst into the waters that are magical nerdiness. We're about to talk about Juan Tamariz. Juan Tamariz is a Spanish magician. He is known as the maestro. He plays an invisible violin on stage. He's wonderful. Juan appeared in, on TV in Spain and South America in the mid-70s. It led to numerous other TV performances, and soon Juan was a well-respected superstar on TV in, in the Spanish-speaking community. In Spain, magic is considered to be a high art, up there with sculpture, painting, acting, dance, music. It's not like that in North America. It's like that in Spain because of Juan Tamaris. And Tamaris um, explains his approach to magic in a book that he published in the mid-80s called The Magic Way. And it's an overall framework approach to a magic trick and how it's inexperienced. And my job as a magician is to give you every single opportunity to entertain the idea that what I am doing really just is magic. In order to do that, Juan believes that the magician must be a guide for an audience, that the magician must guide his audience down the pathway of possibility. And at the end of the pathway of possibility, there is this idea that what I am doing is magic. And that's where we want to go. That's where your inner child goes play. You're not inhibited by anything. You have pure, unadulterated imagination, creativity, and infinite possibility. And that's where we want to go at the end of the pathway. Now, to get to the end of the pathway, I need to close all the doors of possibility along the way. In closing the doors, that's what stops you, an audience, from figuring out the trick. I need to show you that behind these doors are false solutions, distractions that, are taking, that aren't getting us to the end of the pathway. And what I mean by this is um, there are the natural questions you ask yourself when you watch a magic trick. Like, oh, you know what, I think it's in, it's in, it's in his other hand. So I'll show that hand empty. That door closes. Well, what if I shuffle the cards? Sure, go ahead. Door closes. You know what? I think it's up his sleeve. Well, let me roll those up for you. Door closes. In closing all the doors, logic is defeated. We reach the end of the pathway, and your imagination can soar. I take away all the possibilities so that you're left with one. It's magic. 
Now, in order to do this, Juan believes you need to have as many methods or as many answers as possible. Because each method is going to prove or disprove certain conditions. And conditions are essential in magic. Now, what do I mean by conditions? We touched on this briefly earlier when I said having someone else shuffle, um, rolling up my sleeve, showing my hands empty. It's the fairness in which the manner the trick is executed in. Because without conditions, you cannot realize that magic has taken place. Without conditions, you can't realize the difference between the initial condition before the magic happens and the final condition after the magic happens. So conditions are essential. So Juan comes up with every method possible, and I mean everything, from the super easy to the insanely complex, and he lists them all out. And when I say everything, for example, in his book, just taking a coin and vanishing in your hand, Juan lists 36 different methods. 36 different methods to vanish a coin. That's crazy. And as soon as he has all these methods, he plays with them. He sees what works and what doesn't, what goes well together. He can then choose the best combination in a given moment to get an audience like yourself to the end of the pathway. And the best combination is dictated in and by the moment, the context of the performance. Now, if we were in an arena of 5,000 people, I wouldn't do a card trick. No one could see it. It wouldn't be very good. I'd do a big stage illusion with a box or something. It, it would play well. But now imagine I'm in your living room with a couple of your friends, and we're just hanging out. If I do a card trick, we'd have this nice, intimate, connected moment. But then if I were to walk in with a big box, a stage illusion, in your living room, it probably wouldn't fit. It would feel awkward. I'm putting it on a show. The context is wrong. So the method is dictated in and by the moment. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Enough talk about magic. Let's do some. By a show of hands, who here wants to go down the magic pathway with me? Awesome. Awesome. Um, there is a, a young, uh, uh, there's a lady right there. I believe she's holding on a phone. She's in the second, second tier right there. What's your name? Sorry. What's your name? Deborah. Deborah. Deborah, could you come up on stage as everyone welcomes you? Let's hear for Deborah. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Hey there, Deborah. Wonderful. And here, I'll help you up on stage here. It's a bit of a, a bit step? of a step. Here. Wonderful. And Deborah, if you'd stand right here on the circle for me so that we can get you all in. And I want you to face out so that everyone can see you. And I want you to wave to everyone. They're all going to wave back. Cool, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Now, Deborah, I'm just going to flip through the cards. I'd like you to say stop whenever you like. Stop. Right here? Mm -hmm. We're going to take this card out. It doesn't matter that I see it, okay? We're going to use the four of hearts. And we have some projection here so that you guys can see up in the back. So the four hearts, I'm just going to stick in the deck a little bit right about there. And I'm going to go through very slowly. And you can see that there are no other. Uh, there's a four of diamonds, but uh, your card was the four of hearts. Yes. And if we keep going, there are no other fours. And like, there are no other four of hearts. That's no. the only one. That's right. And how many cards down would you say your four of hearts was in the deck? Mm, roughly 20. Roughly 20 or so. So it's in the lower quadrant here, right? Yes. So it would be fair to say that your four of hearts would not be on top because it's maybe 15 or 20 cards from the bottom. Yeah? OK? But check this out. All I have to do is wave my hand just like this. And that's the moment one card rises straight up to the top, <laughs> that four of hearts. Awesome. Uh -huh. Thank you. You know, we're going to do it again. I'm going to do this five times for you. It's the same trick. I'm going to give you every single opportunity to entertain the idea that this is magic. So we're going to take that card and place it into the middle. I'm going to leave it sticking out. I didn't push it in all the way, because I want you to do this. Take your finger, Deborah, and I want you to push it in all the way. All the way in. Yeah, square it up. Perfect. Fair, right? Fair? Yep. And look, I haven't done the magic yet. That card is not on top. Nope. It's still the queen of diamonds. It's only when you wave your hand over the cards like this that the card rises straight up to the top. That four <laughs> of hearts. Crazy, right? Amazing. Nice. Thank you. But no, oh, thank you. <laughs> You know what, Deborah, I need your help. I want, um, I'm doing most of the magic, so I want you to lift off of at least half the cards. Just lift off half the cards, OK? Place them back. And I want you to wave your hand over this time. Go ahead, show them that card. Show it to the camera. Go ahead, show them the four hearts. Go ahead, show them. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> cool. Well, I'm going to do it again. Okay. And now there's people in the back. And even though we do have the camera, I don't want you to think I'm cheating. So I'm going to be super fair. We just have one card here. And I want you to touch it. Okay. Make sure it is just one yep. playing card, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Okay? And go ahead, push it in for me. Push it in all the way. And I want you to wave your hand over the cards. And it should rise up straight up. Okay, it didn't work. Uh, wave your hand over. That's weird. Um, wave your hand over and it should rise up straight up to the top. It should keep rising straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. But there's a problem with this trick. You know the moment the card comes to the top, the moment I wave my hand, but you cannot see the card come to the top. So I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to bend this card. That way you can see that bend anywhere, yeah? That's a really predominant bend. Yeah. And that's maybe 20 or so cards from the bottom. Look, goes in super fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And again, all I have to do is wave my hand. Do not blink or you'll miss this. Wow. <laughs> Rises straight up to the top. Oh, too cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now that's good, but I want to give you every opportunity to entertain the idea this is magic. I don't want you to stop thinking too soon. So this time, like we were just making a card travel a short distance, maybe a half an inch to about a foot, I would say. But what if I wanted to make a card travel as far as possible under the fairest possible conditions? What would that look like? Well, let me show you. We're going to still use your four hearts. I'd like you to take this. Go ahead, Deborah, and I have um, a marker here, and I want you to sign it. I want you to make it visible. Doodle, draw, make it big so that everyone can see your signature, okay? Perfect. Your pen doesn't work. Pardon? Your pen doesn't work. Really? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that's fine. Um, well, no, the reason for the marker, well, th th that pen won't work. The marker, um, I wanted you to be able to see this card. We're going to make it unique. But you know what? If it's just about visible, um, we'll just do this. We'll rip it. That way, we'll have a physical manifestation of this card. It's unique like this. There's no other card like this in the world. And Deborah, I want you to pinch on to the corner right there. Go ahead, pinch on. And we're going to pull. Oh, pops right off. That is your receipt. This. These two match together, okay? And I want you to hold on to it, keep it somewhere safe, keep it somewhere accessible, okay? okay. But I'm gonna keep ripping up your card. We're gonna make it, destroy it a little bit so that we got these three pieces here. I'm gonna fold them up just a little bit. Wonderful. So this is your four of hearts, missing corner and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch closely. We're gonna take these pieces. They go inside the hand. You can see that they really do go in there. And Deborah. I want you to keep me fair. I want you to, here, I'm going to pull back this. Mm -hmm. and I want you to hold on to my wrist. Squeeze okay. tightly. You're going to act as a security alarm. You can all watch this. Don't keep your hand or your eyes off my hand. <laughs> now, if I try to move my hand even a little bit, even if I just move my thumb here, you would fe you feel that, right? So if I were to try to steal those pieces out, you, you would know. Absolutely. You, you would you'd totally know, and I want, I want you to say something if you do. Now, that marker, um, it didn't work, but it's still a magic marker. So we're going to use it, okay? Watch close. Again, do not let go. Okay. Crazy, right? Yeah. And you haven't let go this no. entire time. Did you feel anything? Nothing? No. And there's nothing in my sleeves. You can check. Nothing. The card is gone. But earlier, you can let go, thank okay. you. But earlier, I asked you, what if I can make a card travel as far as possible under the fairest possible conditions? Well, you're all asking yourself, where did the card go? And there's been one idea, one seed that has been growing in each of your minds. You've all asked yourself at one point or another during this talk, you've asked, what is with the orange? And I haven't gone near it since this very beginning. And Deborah, you're standing in the way. I'd have to go through you to get it. Can you actually please pick up that orange? I don't want to touch it for that. I want you to pick it up. I want you to look at it, make sure there are no holes. It's not cut open or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It is just a real, regular orange? Yes. Fantastic. And again, hands empty. I want to be completely fair about this. It's juicy. Inside cool. is a playing card. And I don't want to touch it. I want you, them to think that I'm cheating. I want you to reach in there, pull that out. It's really in there. You've got to pull harder. There. 
And I want you to unravel that, Deborah. Go ahead and unravel it. And I want you to see what playing card it says it is at the top. What, what playing card is that? Is that a four of hearts? Mm -hmm. It is a four of hearts. And if you keep unrolling it, is there a corner missing from that four of hearts? Yes, it is. Yes? And if you match it with the corner that you were holding before, is that a perfect match? Yes or no? Yeah. And Deborah, thank you. I'll take that from you. And Deborah, does that feel like real magic? Absolutely. Thank you. Well, Deborah, thank you so much for coming up on stage for me. This is for you. And ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Deborah. Thank you so much. Cheers. You. Nice welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the creative spark is really just having the passion to continue to learn and to dream because there is always something else to learn. You just need to keep thinking. And when you keep thinking, you'll realize that you've only just begun and that the possibilities are endless. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Brown. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Thank you.